for most people, Christmas Eve is a time of anticipation and hope. For me, it will always be remembered as the day my death began. My name is Chapitha Mieta. In 1854, I lived at El Pueblo, a big trading post located very near where you are standing now. We traded with everyone who came through. Trappers, mountain men, the indigenous tribes like the Ute, the Sioux, and the Hikori. It was a peaceful life, and it was beautiful here. We had an enclosed plaza made entirely of adobe brick from Taos, New Mexico. Many of us lived within the fort. I woke one morning and the air had become frigid. It was cold. I could see my breath as I walked across the plaza, and yet I remember thinking it was going to be a beautiful day. Almost everyone was asleep when it all began. First, I should tell you about the Ute who were living nearby. They had been angry for some time, and I don't blame them. The U.S. government had promised them farming equipment and to teach them how to farm if they lived within a certain area. They also promised them protection from other tribes. But after years of disease and starvation, they saw no response from the government. And then a youth woman was killed by a Mexican man, and nothing, I mean nothing, was done about it until the famous guy, Kit Carson, set up a meeting with David Merriweather, who was the superintendent of Indian Affairs, and the youth representatives, who, of course, were furious. Now, after that meeting, the murderer was caught and jailed, and then under suspicious circumstances, he escaped. After all the unfulfilled promises, there was one more hit that the tribe couldn't take. So Meriwether, in all of his wisdom, smallpox blankets, blankets that killed many a tribesman and women and children. Like I said, I don't blame them. All of this was going on around us, and yet at El Pueblo, we sensed no danger. We had traded openly with the natives. After all, I was one. So you see, on December 24, 1854, the residents of El Pueblo had no idea that within a few hours, we would all be dead or captured. Hunger will make a man do strange things. We opened our gates early that morning to gather firewood, and that was our big mistake. Chief Chiara Blanca's men rushed the gates. They grabbed my brother-in-law Romaldo's gun, and they shot him in the head. After that, everything just went loco. Guns were blazing, arrows were flying, horses' hooves cut deep grooves within the snow, and blood colored it all red. Horses, horses and people were screaming. I was taken hostage, along with others. This young man, Felix Sandoval, he was taken hostage too. He watched his father be killed in front of him, and he was only 12. His little brother Juan was taken hostage, and he was only seven. Where there had been peace and harmony in the plaza that Christmas Eve day, now there was just death and sorrow. I don't remember much what happened after that. I was in shock, and I had been injured in the raid, and I couldn't quit crying. Why couldn't they have killed me? in the fort with my family and friends. Instead, here I was hostage to the very murderers who had disrupted my happy home. I remember now, we traveled toward the wet mountains and then onto Great Creek. And then the Arapaho raided us and we narrowly escaped with our lives. We were made to ride a long time before we could rest put water on our faces. Oh, the water was so sweet and cold. I didn't know it was the last water I would ever drink. History is unclear about my death. Some say I had become a burden to the youth. 
so they killed me. Others say I was running for my life and for my freedom when their arrows found me. Either way, two weeks after that raid, I was dead. I was dead. Felix was returned to the Americans eight months later, where he told of the story. His little brother Juan was sold as a slave to the Navajo. In the fort, well, the fort lay quiet. No one would go near it. Everyone saw it, it housed the spirits of the dead. We could be heard moaning in the darkness, it was said. Doors fell from their doorways. Curtains whipped from their windows and flew away. All was quiet. Until 1858, when the gold rush came through. But I have to wonder, what would have happened had the government kept their promise to the youth? Would we have lived in peace and harmony like we had in El Pueblo? I don't know. But I would like to think that people would rather live in peace than die in war. My name is Chupita Miera. Remember it, please. It is my only name.